stop. Sure you want the rest of it? Dirty Harry Miller. Dirty Harry Miller. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Dirty Harry Minute, a podcast where we review and analyse every minute that a 1971 Warner Brothers film, Dirty Harry. I'm one of your hosts, Trent, and I'm joined with... John! Tim. And today we are joined with our guest, Travis Nash. Hey, thanks for having me. Do you prefer Trav or Travis? Either way. Either way. It's sort of Clint or Clinton, Eastwood type thing. (laughs) That's what, that's what my mum was going for. <laughs> it's like Ron and Ronnie Howard, I hear you. as he used to be credited. So we are up to minute 35. The minute begins with the assembled policeman looking at a war map. The assembled policeman being the chief, the lieutenant, Harry and Chico Gonzalez. And it ends with Bresler, Lieutenant Bresler, reminding the chief of two categories of people Scorpio threatened to kill. So here we are, minute 35. If you're still listening, if you've been marathoning it, <laughs> um, here we go. Let's dive into it. I like Chico's um, glasses. Yeah, do you think pretty... Harry gave him crap for that? I, I, I think they could have eased us into it. I think there could have been a comical scene in the car where he puts the glasses on and he's like, no nerds. I'm like, <laughs> could they just sort of spring it on us here? Like, and he's right up to that map. So that must be, he must, his eyesight must be pretty. <laughs> I couldn't Pretty tell if it was chance. Chico or Jose Filicano in this scene, to be honest with you. But <laughs> it's Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean, it too. It suits him, though. He looks, I reckon he looks pretty rad. He could have played a good Robin. Yeah, he Robin with Batman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would have been awesome. <laughs> Who's the other dude? Who's the clip the lieutenant? The guy with the... That guy? He's got some mad hair as well. I'm going to have to give him some he's hair very, points. He's very frustrated that Chico is sort of giving him a lip, or like saying, you know... His personal space has been invaded here. His face is going, shut up, shut up, don't say. There's a lot of rooftops. The chief needs to know this is a good plan. What do you think of this plan? I think the plan's a bit bizarre. Yeah, the plan, it's, it's, it's pretty, um, what's the word? Lightning. Lightning <laughs> never strikes the same place twice, Trav. But I don't know, like, is that, is that a real thing? Or is that just movie happy ha- happenstance? Like- and and they, they're sort of saying, we've locked all the other church or the buildings so is Scorpio really going to go to each <laughs> each building, try and door, it's locked. And he's like, move on to the next building. It's locked, move on. He doesn't seem like a guy that like anything stops him. Because, like, no spoilers, but the end scene, he's just walking for a sawmill. Yeah. He's just kicking doors down, <laughs> jumping, you know, doing flips, <laughs> Walk, walking up conveyor belts. I don't think this guy, the guy's pretty parkour I don't <laughs> think door locked doors are going to stop him. Do you think? How do you think Harry picked out the stakeout? Just using that board behind them, the wall, Tim, or was he just? Well, I guess so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You wouldn't want to spend your time in North Beach looking up all the time and give the game away. If, um, they should. They should have been throwing darts. Like I think that would have made more sense. Just <laughs> right. Yeah, think about here. Well, the answer, John, it's a GTA map. So <laughs> <laughs> he needs to, he needs to change his car or something. Yeah, the mission told him to go there. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, you have 20 seconds to go to this area. And then it goes, wasted. <laughs> and it was one of those GTA glitches where you've already done the mission, but it still keeps showing up for like the next 10 minutes after you've done it. <laughs> I've already done it. And the best part is just before the mission, you go to like In-N-Out Burger. And then like Harry's like, I want a number nine, <laughs> a number four with cheese. <laughs> you can't skip it every time. Where everyone's like, we've got to make a GTA 2, but then they just took all the content. It's like a massive city where you can't do anything. True Crime New York or something like that. You can do some sick martial arts in it, though. You can roundhouse people. Have you played LA Noir? Yeah, I've I've always wanted to. Yeah, that's pretty cool. LA Law. Noir. Yeah, LA Law. (laughs) (laughs) He's wearing a belt. Look at him. (laughs) Every time you unlock a trophy, it's like, (laughs) chin, (laughs) chin. That'd be sick. I want to hear an 8-bit version of the LA Law theme now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's Hey Dad or Doogie Howser. I can't quite work it out. <laughs> Doogie Howser sounds like you're dying. 
L.A. Laws. L.A. Laws. That's right. I think it was composed by the same dude. Trent Reznor, I think, composed them all. Do you think Chico's enjoying the job at this point, Tim? Oh, he's he's in the thick of it for sure. So, I, I don't know. I mean, he, he's still a rookie, isn't he? Yeah. So, I, maybe sort of like the equivalent of starting a job and being thrown in the deep end. I would like that everything triggers his gag reflex. Like, he looks at that map <laughs> and he's like, Whoa! and then he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so... <laughs> and then the chief walks in and he's like, Whoa! Harry's still playing it pretty cool, isn't it? He's content to let the other people in the room talk and just... Chirp in when it's necessary. The, the ghost of Bressler. Does that does that hold up in here in this? When they cut ghost to the Chico. <laughs> Sorry, the ghost of Chief, I meant. Yeah. Do you think at this point, like if they remade this movie, Harry would be a bit more agitated and sarcastic? Like, this cry this this plot is this is pathetic. <laughs> this um this plan's pretty bad. There it's would have just... been a lot of fists to the table, like You're out of order. <laughs> What's that in his hand? Is that a pen? What has he got there? Is he, he's got a bit of a fidgety thing going on. I think he's struggling to maintain his, um, what do you call it? His equilibrium. He's brown. <laughs> he's surrounded by brown carpets and brown curtains. And he looks a bit hungover. <gasps> he's all white bread. <laughs> <laughs> and the ghost of Chief is just get, taking too much <laughs> of his energy. <laughs> you see how he's always walking away from people and sort of just... Bouting words of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's the lone wolf. But, yeah, they're following him. So, like, they can't see him, but maybe they're smelling his deodorant or he's farting as, he, as the ghost walks away from he's him. He's brute 33. <laughs> Would it be brute 44 Magnum? He's... <laughs> I don't know. There should be a man's perfume called Ghost. It's like, ghost you suit. barely know you're wearing it. <laughs> it's an empty bottle. You pay $100 for it. It's called Squeezy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tim, it's time for an IMDb intervention here. Uh, IMDB says, a superego is actually that part of the human psyche that restrains humans from doing anything that is evil. So there you go. Mm. <laughs> the Fink's got that wrong. That's from IMDB. Mm. On the Dirty Harry. For page. this film. Dirty Harry, yeah. Did you add that? No, I did. <laughs> I'm assuming a psychiatrist did. <laughs> yeah. Or a Jungian or something. Oh, sorry, a Freudian. Is this one of your own quotes again? <laughs> <laughs> Super ego isn't the, the part that a, a violent killer... I like when you see Trivia Wars, where someone writes trivia and then it's like, um, actually, <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, in contrast to Above's trivia, it was actually brown <laughs> and beige, so... And then you're like, why are there two trivia here? Like, yeah. Just, can't you merge the two <laughs> together? Because like, you're both right. <laughs> like, exactly, dickheads. <laughs> who, who does that? <laughs> Are they are they super fans of that particular film, or are they just like all over IMDb? Like, it's just the haters, man. <laughs> That's why they had to close IMDb message boards. Yeah, now, because there were too many haters on there. Just <laughs> brutal. What a podcast do then? Because that was always the best part of an end of yeah. movie podcast. <laughs> read the forums and <laughs> yeah. I find Reddit is like oh that that's the new that's out of <laughs> the <control>. replacement. <laughs> so they're basically like. People like like the homeless people got kicked out of New York and now they're on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> You're your problem now. Because which one's more intense, Reddit or 4chan? Oh, I've never used 4chan. I feel like 4chan's like the, the like in extremist but, one. But no yeah. one's serious on 4chan. I think it's like it's like an open mic where everyone's trying to be the most offensive person. Whereas I think like Reddit, people are just arguing about like what colour the gobble dog really goes for. <laughs> I don't know. A couple talk. I don't know. There probably is a forum for that. There's a lot of flags in this scene, Trev. Why? Too many flags. Too many. I got an issue with that. Like, you know, I think there should only be three flags per movie. <laughs> <laughs> and they've just met their quota in one scene. Like, unless they're like, you know, it's a patriot film and there's a lot of American flags or whatever you want to do. But what are, what are those? They look like the fallout, the... <laughs> Confederate flag. Confederate. The bear, <laughs> don't step on the bear. Is that what it is? <laughs> the NRS. Council buildings have um, you know, multiple flags in them. Yeah. Like, even to this very day, a lot of them 
Masonic lodges, things like that. What's with the curtains as well? Like, I don't think there's windows behind that. It's almost like a little stage where yeah, they do a you'd little... almost think it was a set. <laughs> Who'd dunk it in a Musical theatre. Do you think in real life a woman's ever been in that room? It's just full of... No, there's a sign out the front. <laughs> <laughs> it says no skirts. Like, it was... <laughs> Uh, probably not because, they, uh, yeah, they filmed it at the Masonic Lodge, I guess. And they wouldn't mm-hmm. allow the Masonic Lodge. It's like in Dr. Strangelove. It's like, you can't come in here and see the big board. <laughs> like, it's the Russian <laughs> dude. It's <laughs> about the skirts. What do you think Scorpio is doing right now at this time, Tim? Um... Having a wank. <laughs> <laughs> is he in the North Beach, as you say, trying every door? Oh, it's locked. It's locked. <laughs> well, he must be. <laughs> So, what do we know at the moment? So far, Scorpio, he's killed an attractive woman in a pool. Mm. He's killed a black boy. Mm. He's attempted to kill... Was he trying to kill the Pashmina man or the ice cream the other guy? Uh, both, wasn't both. it? Both. It was either one. It was... Mm. Yeah, they were homosexuals and that's what he was targeting. So, two po- he sort of killed 2.5 people. Um, do you think they would have told Pashmina man that he was in the scopes? Probably uh, not. At least not. No, just... Yeah, it would just scare people too much, Tim. Yeah, well, I, they probably didn't know that he was going to hit Pashmina Man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. They just saw him from a helicopter, so. Did jack shit to apprehend him. Yeah. As well. <laughs> Is that the scene where they're just the, in the daytime? Yeah. The helicopter's like, you're there, what are you doing? And then he's like, oh, geez, time for me to book. And then, <laughs> how do they not catch him? I find that just the weirdest thing. They must have been talking instead of looking like they're supposed to. I think that's a line. It's like Dirty Harry's like, he seems like the only one that does anything in this police force. Like, everyone's just looking at maps and. Or they're a ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ghost cop tries to apprehend him and it goes through him and it's like, God damn, my immortality. <laughs> well, when you're in San Francisco, did you go to the, the square or the park where Pashmina Man was going to yeah. be assassinated? Yeah, did, I went there, yeah. Did you work out where he might have gotten that ice cream from? No red no. dots on your oh. head, like where you were there. There were still a lot of small laundries there and. Um, Small gish cafes. Couldn't see any ice cream. Was the bench there? I don't think so. Did you try and act out the walk of Pashmina Man? I was there at lying. night, so it wasn't a bright sunny day. So it was quite disappointing. Yeah, did any bums accost you? <laughs> no, no. It's all pretty genteel and uh, it's like Fitzroy, you know. It's quite. Uh, is there like a, a memorial for him? The... There's nothing there. It's a shame. This is shame, a. You could just lie and. <laughs> just make oh, it there up. was a big memorial. Make it up like your and quote. And there was a dog yeah. statue of his dog Meatball. Trent. Meathead. 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 <laughs> that, how did you find that out? Is that, no, is that in the credits? Trent knows all about Sudden Impact, don't you? Sudden Impact. It, he's got the dog called Meathead. Hmm. <laughs> he's like a bulldog or something meathead, like that. Meathead, Jughead. <laughs> well, maybe it's the same dog from Stand By Me, the junk yard. <laughs> oh. I think it was played by Tom Waits, actually. <laughs> I hope it was the dog from Jake and the Fat Man that used to be next to... <laughs> who played the Fat Man again? Was that Burl Ives or I something? I think he was like? called the Fat Man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> they did a casting call. <laughs> who played Jake? Go with a bit of a mullet. He played the Math Man. <laughs> no, who played Math Man? <laughs> Jake and the Math Man. <laughs> An award-winning show. <laughs> I'm learning and enjoying. <laughs> well, Trav, do you have any favourite... What's your favourite serial killer movie? Like a movie, so, movie to feature a serial killer in it. Yeah, Will like, this be up there? Or? I like Seven. Seven, yeah. It's pretty good. Trent, have you ever fallen down the wormhole IMDb about the Boston Strangle? I have. Ah. Yeah, a couple of times. I can't remember what his name was. Um, Albert something. Albert Solvatino. De Salvo. De Salvo, that's the one, yeah. I watched the movie of Tony Curtis... A few weeks ago. That's not a bad movie. You've seen it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And they call him a nut. Uh, he's obviously... He was convicted for... Uh, he was never convicted for the murders, was he? I don't think so, but uh, sexual violation. Yeah. yeah. He was just nabbed for one rape or something and never formally confessed. Do you think they just do it to have like a wild name in the paper? Like Boston Strangler is a pretty sick... Yeah. <laughs> That's a good mock here. It's whichever paper sells the most with a nick. <laughs> <laughs> like Zodiac Killer, that's that's pretty up there. Yeah. The Hillside Strangler. We said we didn't like, you know, the Gemini Killer would be a very bad name for a killer. <laughs> Although you mentioned there was an Aquarius Killer or something, is that right? Well, this guy's Scorpio. So Scorpio, he's... yeah. Hank Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> would you like cream with that? Sorry. <laughs> That'd be really good if Hank's if um was it Albert Brooks? Yeah, that's right. If Albert Brooks was the killer in this, like being Hank. 
Especially the bit when he gets beaten up. <laughs> Homer, if you could just kill one person as you go out the door, that'd be great. <laughs> hey, what do you think on the map the different colours mean? Oh, they're all the hidden trophies. <laughs> oh, that's all the, the favourite hot dog joints, Clint Ghost. <laughs> it's where Harry's, like, giving death stares to people. <laughs> Or the, their places where he's going to get coffee and it's like, keep an eye on that car behind me. Is the steam coming out of the exhaust? <laughs> and the guy's like, geez, I don't know. I'm just serving coffee, mister. Or they're just the um, Republican headquarters. I something. think they're all pointing to, uh, is it is it Chico? <laughs> is it Chico's glasses? <laughs> it's like, he's the killer. What's in that photograph behind Chico? This photograph. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're all photos of Clint. I think it's from Shining. I was going to say. Uh, Jack like Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> you ever watch Hotel? <laughs> You've always been racist, Harry. <laughs> hey, Lloyd. <laughs> it's good to see you again, sir. I can't really see the, the acne scarring you're talking about, Tim. Uh, Trent, on uh, the chief, or is it? Is it that, that's on um, the mayor. Oh, the mayor. Uh -huh. what's, what's he looking down at? His Kindle. <laughs> He looks a bit hungover here. I think he had a bit of a bender the night before. <laughs> Harry. Yeah. He looks a bit... Ugh. Shaking. You were talking, sorry, listeners, about Harry behind the chief when he's talking about the um, how the doors will be locked. And Harry's... Maybe it's real life. He's just got a pebble in his shoe or something. What is it? Uh, uh, bit of an odd choice. He's sort of oh, shuffling. It's like, like a fight club scenario. Yeah. He, he's, he's projecting the image of the chief. <laughs> That's his thoughts. <laughs> so, so the chief's the Brad Pitt. Is yeah. that what you're saying? <laughs> Tyler Durwin. I never got how they, they match a Dirty Harry fashion minute, Tim, how they have a black tie with a black shirt. Is that? Oh, uh, they're the, the, the cops. Yeah. Well, if, the if, if Police Academy can do it, then Dirty Harry <laughs> can do it. I love how, like, military and police, how they, like, everything has to be this, like, stars, medals, shields. Like, it's, it's weird. <laughs> like, someone made a uniform and they're like, we need to go a little bit more bling. Like we need to, <laughs> we need to put some dimenties on it. Like gold. Does that badge look real on the chief? Or could it be just a little piece of paper? I drew that on oh, a gold it. peak it's with a posca. It, it bends a bit. Oh, it's a bit Bringing this to sort of a local um, matters, do, has the Victoria Police changed to the dark blue? Weren't they meant to change their uniforms from light blue Ooh. to dark blue? I don't know. They were made to. They were talking about how they. I think. I don't, I don't know if it was, like, to do with authority or something. Like, mm. they thought the blue... Or they were trying to modernise it or something. It'd be good if they all changed the clockwork orange outfits. Like, <laughs> white overalls, eyeballs... Just carried batons instead pieces. of guns. <laughs> that scene's pretty menacing where they're walking down that canal. Yeah. <laughs> whistling to, like, Beethoven. Like, I think that'd be... Because those guys become cops, I think, at the end of yeah. it. So, uh, yeah. Dim and... Georgie, Georgie, I think they become... You know the whole conspiracy that Kubrick, you know, was made to manufacture the moon landing, yeah? They pull another evidence in Clockwork Orange, the drunk's talking about man on the moon or something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's... But that's from the book. Oh, okay, the yeah. Man on the moon, men spinning around. <laughs> in the book, I think he's got good dialogue where he's like, normally I just get to the ultraviolet, <laughs> but I like to hear this guy go blurp, blurp, blurp. <laughs> I like it in your version of Clockwork Orange. He sounds like... um. What's that guy? Uh, Leech? <laughs> what was that? What? The, the guy that used to do Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Robin Leach. Oh, who oh, died like two weeks ago. Like, Ciao, Bambino. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm here at MC Hammer's giant <laughs> yeah. fortress of <laughs> pants. Oh, speaking of the Victorian police, Tim, I was on Elizabeth Street the other day. I was a bit heartwarmed. I saw a, a Sikh officer had like the the turban with the the logo, you know, the, the white the white police. Yeah, that was quite yeah. nice and tolerant. Yeah, it was good. I wonder how Harry would have dealt with that. If there's a character like that in there, <laughs> you mean like I don't think. So. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for this minute. Anything else to add, Trav? Uh, yeah. Again, I'll give it five cheap <laughs> stars. <laughs> I give it five Buddha statues. Five flags. Five prostate maps. <laughs> <laughs> Who in the room would be um, actually probably it's why as you check your prostate? Probably the chief, I guess, if they... Who do you think is going to get prostate? Is that what I'm saying? Well, what do they say? Well, Harry, look at Harry's got problems I down. That's why he's shuffling. <laughs> <laughs> look at those fingers up my ass. 
But th- I mean, all four of those guys would be. Oh no, Chico wouldn't be forty. And what do they say? You got to start getting your prostate. This is a public service announcement, people. <laughs> um, you meant to get your prostate. All men need to get start getting your prostate checked from the age of forty upwards. So, but back then, thirty was the forty of today. Yeah, like oh, probably. You know what I mean, yeah. So Chico's not far off it. Either that, or you just get a prostate like wall hanging, <laughs> just put up in your house. <laughs> <laughs> some flags, a map. Well, Trav, will you join us for the next minute? Yeah. I'll uh, do my rating. I know people are hanging out for it. We'll catch you next time on On Dirty Dirty Harry Minute. Minute by minute by minute by minute.